Good morning, everybody, and a happy Monday morning to you. I'm glad that everybody, or I hope everybody's had a wonderful weekend. Really quickly, I put the meatloaf recipe up on my community page, and a lot of people have put comments down on how they would change the recipe different ways. So you guys should go take a look at that if there's different ways you like your meatloaf. All right, in this video, we have five, count them, five different stories that have come out. Some are new. Some are old, but they've given them a new twist. Anyway, we're going to touch on all of them. Uh, also, you should know that video number two, while it is royal family stuff, it's mainly focusing on the fact that William is being attacked online ruthlessly. We're going to cover all that in video number two. You're not going to want to miss it. A big thank you to that one on Twitter for the above picture. Let's jump in and cover what we have, shall we? Let's go. Well, this is a bit of interesting information long before the lease ran out and of course we know that you know the queen passed it's being reported now that the queen had planned to somehow push harry and megan out of frogmore cottage and give it to prince andrew interesting this was claimed by royal expert robert hardman i don't know where he's getting his information i i would love to see the proof of this according to him this plan would have gone ahead if the queen had lived just one more year. She said that the Sussex's time in Frogmore was, as she put it, unsustainable and had put plans in place to have them and Prince Andrew moved into different properties. So they're saying it was her plan to move him out to end the lease for the Sussexes and move Andrew in there, it was a money thing because she said it was unsustainable. Now, where Harry and Meghan would have gone, I can't even, it doesn't say as far as I can tell where they were going to send, where she was going to send them. But then they stepped back in 2020 and were asked to vacate the cottage we know in March of 2023. And let's not forget the entire property had been refurbished back in 2019. Andrew doesn't want to move because he feels that the Royal Lodge is in a ring of steel of Windsor Castle. But here's what it comes down to. It sounds like Charles, in trying to move Andrew, is doing what the Queen originally wanted to do. Hmm. All right, let's move on. Here we go. All right, I covered this when I did the Oprah interview debunk, where, you remember, Megan said, Unlike you see in the movies, there's no class on how to speak, how to cross your legs, how to be royal. There's none of that training. That might exist for other members of the family. That was not something that was offered to me. Even down to like the national anthem, no one thought to say, oh, you're American. You're not going to know that. So that's me late at night Googling how, what's the national? I've got to learn this. I've got to learn these 30 hymns for church. I'm now going to play you some clips from the Oprah show and a clip from my previous debunking video. Here we go. Everywhere, mm. Or was a move because you weren't getting enough support from the firm? It was both. Did you think she was well received in the beginning? Yes, far better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we now know that that is untrue. She took a two hour etiquette lesson before she met the queen. It was how to drink tea, how to eat correctly, how to curtsy. This was done at a tea room somewhere in California. The reservation was made under a false name. So when she said that she learned it quickly in front of the house and yeah, that's not true. That's another lie. So in case you're unaware, that is Samantha the Panther Cohen that you're looking at. And she gave Meghan Markle six months of royal training. So I keep going back to what Valentine Lowe said. She wanted to be the victim. She wanted people to reject her. She wanted, you know, problems and she got them. You remember in the Oprah show, they said that they had been offered no help, but it's coming out now that people were sent, very expert people were sent, but for whatever reason, Megan didn't trust them. She wouldn't use them. And now it's come out that even Sophie tried to help her. Sophie invited her over to her home for tea, but Megan never once picked up the phone and called Sophie. Sophie was constantly calling her, trying to get her, you know, help. And, and she totally, Megan totally blew her off. Let's not forget what happened at their very last event where Megan and Harry, I'm not going to show you the clip again, where they, they pushed through the chairs to get in front of Sophie and Edward. But for those of you who may not have seen it, at some point, Megan and Sophie locked eyes and Megan broke eye contact first because she knows what she did. She knows. 
Now, Giles Brandreth, who is a friend or was a friend of the late Queen Elizabeth, said that Queen Elizabeth understood that Meghan might find it difficult to adjust to royal life because it's challenging. It's, you know, very jolty. And so she decided to ask Sophie to help mentor uh, Megan, Sophie can show you the ropes, but um, Megan made it clear she didn't need Sophie. She had Harry. Well, we all know how well that went. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if people are breaking their NDAs. I don't know if people are getting sick of the royal family constantly being attacked. I don't. I don't know what's going on. But what's being said now is that Megan was offered help. They, they offered everything to help her adjust to royal life, and she threw it right back in their faces. Now, one staffer, his name was Clive Alderton, he was private secretary to the king, even said, and I'm quoting, if we can get this right for Harry, we'll be creating a blueprint for future younger sons for generations. We've seconded people from Clarence House, and she said no. So it, it's come out that she was offered all the help in the world. She threw everything back in their faces, and now is lying and saying that nobody helped her. And I think the, fan, the palace has had enough of the lies. Now, I want you guys to know, I've reported on this before, but for some reason, a lot of people don't seem to remember this. Meghan Markle was offered Queen Elizabeth's black equerry to help her feel more comfortable with all of the racist accusations that were going on in the UK. You guys remember that? Omid Scobie. Megan Mouth's mouthpiece even said he was a charming and intelligent man, but he stood out like a sore thumb to Megan and her friends, and Markle and her friends were insulted. <laughs> he said it was likely due to a lack of black or other non-white staff in senior roles. She goes, I doubt Kate or Catherine was offered an equerry for guidance. Well, since she wouldn't accept help from anybody else, yes, I think the queen tried to be thoughtful and everything got turned down, everything. Even Susan Hussey tried to help Meghan Markle and she turned her down also. Lots of people tried to help her. So basically, guys, what it comes down to is all these people, Sophie and Miss Hussey and, and you know, Cohen, all these people tried to help her, but because she was, they weren't biracial, they didn't feel that, you know, Megan didn't feel like they could help her. So then she was offered somebody who was black and she was like, he sticks out. No, you guys get it. All right, let's move on. All right, this next story that came out, I kind of went, what? Okay. What it's saying is that Megan is concerned that the royal family is somehow going to manipulate Harry into rejoining them. I want you guys to remember that this supposedly they're buying a home in Portugal so that Harry can rejoin the family. This is a, I don't know what this is, but that would mean that the royals want Harry back. <laughs> the royals don't want Harry back with Meghan. There is no half in, half out life. You're either in or you're out. And Harry will not return while he's married to Meghan. So I don't know where these puff piece stories are coming from, but this is a bunch of bunk. Harry will not be returning to royal life while he is married to Meghan. Now, of course, we know that there's rumors floating around that they're in the middle of a divorce, that it's, it, there were, you know, the announcement is imminent. Maybe it is. Now, maybe once he gets divorced, the royal family might bring him back, but never for work, because I don't think the UK uh, public would allow it after everything he said about him. All right, moving on. Here's the thing, though. It's very obvious that they miss royal life because the protocol when you have an HRH is that you're first called your royal highness and then after that it's sir or your royal highness and then after that it's ma'am. But since they're not supposed to be using their, you know, HRHs, this whole thing of call me ma'am, call me sir is a bunch of crap. But they've asked for it so they're probably going to get it. This is what makes Harry feel that he's still royal. I don't understand, you guys already know, I don't understand why the Invictus Games have kept these two, especially after they've lost over 2,000 athletes, especially after Germany splintered off on its own, after the Freedom of Information Act showed that Harry and Meghan were misusing Invictus funds for their own security flights, clothing, food, blah, blah, blah. 
I don't understand why Invictus is still allowing this. They could get rid of Harry. They could ask Harry to step down as patron. You could get Mike Tyndall in there. You could get so many other people in there. And I think Invictus would do much better if they had a different patron. And by the way, for everybody saying, you know, let's not forget that the year after, you know, the Invictus Games is going to be in the UK. Do you think the Royals are going to attend? No. The Royals will not attend. Do you think Megan's going to attend? Only if she's given the security. Are they going to take the kids? Heck no. Now I'm finishing off this video with this article talking about, you know, let's not forget Meghan Markle claimed that she only wore beige and muted colors because you couldn't wear the same color as senior royals. And of course, the internet sleuths went to work and found that, first of all, she had copied a lot of clothing from Catherine, and she had copied a lot of clothing from Princess Diana, and no, it was not all muted tones. She wore purple, she wore red, she wore yellow. Of course, we know she was copying Diana also. I love the fact that when they came out, the royals did what they usually do. They said nothing. Instead, in a show of unity, they decided to all wear of the same color. The senior royals, the non-senior royals went to the Christmas special all wearing the same, I don't know, what is that, purple? It's like a wine color. So of course you have Catherine, then you have cute little Charlotte wearing the same tone of burgundy. And then later on in the day, Zara Phillips showed up in a burgundy coat and so did Pippa. Okay, Pippa's not royal, but still. The point is, you said something without saying anything. Perfect. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell for all notifications. Then go down into the description box after you've left your comments, okay? And hit the link for video number two. You're not going to want to miss it. Let's go.